Hey, welcome to this video. Um, today's lesson is going to be about slope. And I've got a series of PowerPoint slides that Mr. Lamy was nice enough to make, so I am going to use these if you'll bear with me just for a second. All right, let's talk a little bit about slope. Slope is nothing more than change. When we look at a set of data points on a graph, we can look at the line formed by connecting these points as a journey. When traveling, it is best to know where we are starting from and how we are going to travel to our destination. In the case of a line on a graph, the slope represents the direction and difficulty of the journey. So here is a graph, which you're very well aware of, I am sure. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. The one going up and down is the y. And this is a line. And so if you think of this as a journey, we are starting at point A on this one and traveling to point B. I know you can't see this very well, but you will be able to see better in future slides. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the slope-intercept form, and I am going to attempt to increase, zoom in on this so that you can see it a little better. Okay, the most common and useful method for graphing a line on a coordinate plane is to use the slope-intercept form. Again, this is the same graph uh, with the uh, points of A and B. Each of these points have a coordinate location. And you probably remember that we start with the x-axis. So the coordinate location of point A is 1, 1. It's 1 over on the x-axis. It's 1 up on the y-axis. The coordinate location for point B, x-axis first, so that would be 2, comma, and it's up to the third mark on the y-axis, so that, that is 2, 3. Let me go ahead and mark for the A. All right, now the slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and we're going to talk a little bit about why m might be the accepted variable for slope, and b is no, known as the y intercept. Now the y-intercept is just a single point. It's actually the point where the line crosses the y-axis. That is the y-intercept. So it's a single number, but slope actually represents the way the line changes as time progresses. So now we get back to the question of why is slope, let me see if I can line up this paper, you can tell that I am not used to working with the Elmo. Okay, so why is slope known as M, the letter M or the variable M? The short answer is that nobody knows why. However, there are a couple of theories. The first theory being that M stands for the modulus of slope where modulus stands for the fact that slope is a single number representing the change. The second theory is that the letter M is in the middle of the alphabet. So it was chosen because variables such as A, B, and C are mathematically used to represent a single number, while X, Y, and Z are used to, to represent entire axes upon which you plot numbers on. So the middle numbers might have been used, or middle letters rather, might have been used to show a meeting of these two ideas. So again, we're not exactly sure why slope is known as m, but that is the accepted variable. All right, line up my paper here. Okay, so 
let's talk about finding the slope, which again, slope is just simply the change of the line over time. So in order for early mathematicians to talk to each other about the graphs that they were working on, it was very important to create a universal explanation of slope. And to simplify things, mathematicians generally agreed on defining slope as a change in rise over a change in run. So again, going from A to B here, the change in rise over run. Now, when I say rise on this particular one, it is actually going up, but it could, could go down. So if it goes up or down, and then if it goes over, or how much it goes over, rather. And we're going to talk about this much, much more. All right. So rise over run. Again, this is the slope. That's what M stands for, is slope. And it simply the equation means that the slope of a line can be defined as a change in how much a line goes up or down divided by the change in how much it goes left to right when comparing any two points on the line. So again, how much you go up or down. Notice that up is positive, down is denoted as a negative, and how much you go from left to right. Okay, so we've got a couple of points here. <coughs> Excuse me. So first, let's take a look at uh, going always from left to right. Let's take a look at what the slope would be to get from this point to this point. Okay, so remember, rise over run. All right, so first we're going to talk about how much we have to go up or down. So to get to this point from this one, remember we're on a journey here, so this is the beginning of our journey because it's on the left, and we're always going from left to right. So first we're going to have to go down one, two, three, four, five, six. So that puts me even with this one. But notice I went down as opposed to up. So does that mean I have to use a plus or a negative? I hope that you said or at least thought negative. So the rise is a negative six. All right, so that gets us down to the same level as this point. Now, next, let's see how many we have to go over. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that is a positive 9 because we're going to the right. So the slope in this case is a negative 6 ninths. And we can reduce that by dividing 3 by both the numerator and divide the, both the numerator and denominator by 3, which will give us negative 2 thirds. So in this particular example, the slope is negative 2 thirds. That means for every 2 that we go down, we go over 3. So let's try that. Go down 2. 1, 2, over 3, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, over 3, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, over 3, 1, 2, 3. And so, yes, indeed, that got us to our destination, negative 2 thirds slope. This next slide is going to be fun because your teacher is so very creative. You can think of slope 
as being Mario, and that is a question. Notice that the M is italicized, just as M stands for slope. So why was it decided that slope should consider how much a line goes up and down before considering how much it goes over? Well, like air, almost everything else in the universe, the answer can be found in Super Mario. Okay, let's see if we can determine slope from a picture. Remember that slope is rise over run. So I am going to start over here at the left uh, point, the beginning of our destination, which is point A. And we've already got the coordinates written in there. So. I'm going to have to go, remember, rise over run, so I either go up or down first. Well, this one is positive, so I'm going to go up. So it looks like I've got to go up one. Let's see here. We're starting at two to five, so that would be one, two, three. So that is a positive three rise. And once I get there, I've got to go over. One, two to hit B. So the slope on this is three halves or three over two. And notice I don't have a negative because I'm going up, which is which is positive. All right, so again, one, two, three and over two, one, two, and that gets us to our destination. So this is one way to determine slope, is simply to see the points on a graph on coordinate axes, and use your finger and uh, just kind of figure it out. Rise over run, so rise first, and then run, so that's three halves. Okay, so let's, let's talk about these coordinates a little bit. Of course, um, the slope, m equals 3 halves. We've already discovered that. This is the same, the same graph. <clears throat> 2 I'm sorry, the 3 represents how much the line goes up. The up and down axis is denoted by what, what letter? Hopefully you said or thought the letter Y. And this axis is the X axis. Now, on our coordinates, 
it should be easy to remember that the X comes first because in the alphabet X comes before Y. So the first number is X, the second number is Y when you're talking about the coordinate location of a point on a graph. The nice thing about this is that if you have the coordinates on a graph, you don't actually have to use your finger to determine the slope. Because if you've got the coordinates, you can actually determine the slope of a line without seeing the points or without even using a graph. The formula for doing that is on your reference page and it is simply the slope formula. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit because you can't hardly see that. Alright, so the slope formula, M is the slope, is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you right now, hang on and it will in just a few minutes. Let me zoom back out on this thing. And hit the autofocus again. Not too far though. It's kind of fun playing with these Elmos. Sorry that you have to uh, wait on me to figure it out though. All right. So, as I bet you can imagine, we are getting ready to find slopes using the formulas. Now, you may have heard me say sub a while ago, and that's simply what these little twos are, or ones, or whatever the number. Uh, those little numbers beneath the X and Y variables are called subscripts. And they really have no mathematical value other than to be used as a label. So the subscript 1 refers to the X or Y value in the first coordinate pair. And the subscript 2 refers to the X and Y value in the second coordinate pair. So let me show you what I mean by that. Just for reference only, remember x comes first, so it's x, and I'm going to say sub 1 because we know we've got another x coming up here. And if I just said x, you'd be confused. Which x is he talking about? So we're going to call this one sub 1, and this is y sub 1. And I bet you've already figured out this means this is x sub 2, and y subscript or sub Two. People actually just say t sub. So x sub 1, y sub 1, and this one's referred to as x sub 2, y sub 2. And that helps the formula make some sense up here. So the equation is actually, let's just go ahead and work this. y sub 2, here's y sub 2, so that is 7 minus y sub 1. Here's our y sub 1, so that's 1, divided by x sub 2, which is 5, minus x sub 1, which is negative 2. 7 minus 1 is 6, and any time you, anytime you subtract a negative, it's the same as adding, so 5 minus a negative 2 is the same as adding 2, so that would be 6 sevenths, and that is already reduced. So the slope of this line, the line that is defined by these two points, the slope is 6 sevenths. We're going to get lots of practice on this, so don't sweat it if you don't quite get it at this point. You will.
Okay, using the formula that we talked about, again, slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That's your formula. You find the slope of the line defined by these two points. So if I can ask the teacher to pause the video and give the students a few minutes to solve this, then we will go on. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to solve this. Again, let's label these. I will call this coordinate x sub 1, y sub 1. And we'll call this point x sub 2, y sub 2. Again, remember that the formula for slope is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So let's just plug in those values and see what we get. So y sub 2 is 7 minus y sub 1, which is 5, over x sub 2, which is 4, minus x sub 1, which is 2. So 7 minus 5 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And any time you have the same numerator and denominator, then of course that reduces to a value of 1. So the slope for the line that is defined by these two points is 1, which simply means for every one you go up, you must go over 1. Now, let's talk about that just a little bit. Let's talk about the types of slope. If the line, think about it again as a journey, or in this case, uh, someone that's skiing. If you're starting um, over here and going up, then it is a positive slope. If you're starting from the left and going down, it is a negative slope. So at this point, we've worked with both of those, positive and negative. If there's really no slope at all, if it just goes straight over and goes neither up nor down, then it is a zero slope. Here is the one that uh, could, could potentially throw you, so pay attention to this. Lines that go up and down, but do not go left and right at all, have an undefined slope. Undefined slope. And we're going to do some problems and show you this. All right, so let's use our formula to solve these. We'll just call this x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Of course, I know that you know by now that the formula for slope is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That allows us just to um, plug in these numbers and do some simple addition and see what we get. So, <clears throat> excuse me, y sub 2 is negative 3 minus y sub 1, which is also negative 3, over, I need to label that as slope or Mr. Lamey will get me, over x sub 2, which is 5, minus x sub 1, which is negative 1. <clears throat> All right, these two, uh, if you subtract a negative, uh, it's the same as positive. We start out with a negative. So negative 3 plus positive 3 is simply 0. And uh, 5 minus a negative 1 is 6. So in this case, 
the slope is zero. So if you have uh, zero as the numerator, then the slope is zero because that's the way that is reduced. And that is okay to have a slope of zero um, because you can break zero up into as many groups as you want. If I've got uh, zero dollars, then I can divide that equally among the whole class. Um, each one of you gets zero dollars. So uh, that's not a problem. But let's, let's try this side and see if we run into a problem. Again, I'll go ahead and label these. That's x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. We've got our formula up here, and of course you've got it on your reference page. So I will just simply plug these numbers in. So 4 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 4. 2 over 0. Uh-oh, red alert, red alert. Um, anytime you have 0 on the denominator, you've got problems. I'm going to put these little red marks on there to highlight it. <clears throat> this is an undefined slope. Do not get caught up into thinking this is a slope of zero, because it's not. You can't break things up into zero parts. Let me further illustrate that. I'm going to pull out my really big calculator here, which doesn't have very many advanced features, but should be fine for illustrating this point. Again, what? 2 divided by 0. I am going to put in 2 divided by 0. Now you have to watch carefully because you might think it's 0, but you're wrong. It is actually E for error because you can't divide by 0. Again, you cannot break things up into 0 parts. So with that in mind, that's how come this one is undefined. All right. Here are some problems for you to try. The first problem, see if you can find the slope on this using um, you're welcome to use the graph and use your fingers and just see um, what you think the slope is. On these, use the formula to find them. So if the teacher will pause the video at this time to give a few minutes for the students to work, uh, good luck on these problems. Okay, let's take a look and see how you did on these. Um, this first one, let's just use our finger and see if we can find the answer. All right, first we know that we've got to uh, do rise over run. So the rise on this one to get from point A here looks like it's going to be <coughs> um, negative, let's see. like negative 1 and then over 2. So that would be negative 1 half. If I did that correctly, I actually pref much prefer using the formula. So um, let's jump down here to the formula. x1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. All right, so y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Here's y sub 2. Negative 2 minus y sub 1 is 4. Divide it by x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which is negative 1. So this is going to be a negative 6 over 4, which will reduce 
j negative three halves. And on this one, x sub one, y sub one, x sub two, y sub two. So that would be 20 minus one over four minus four. Uh oh, I can see where this is headed. 19 over zero. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. If you get the zero on the bottom, then it is what? It is an undefined slope. Check your paper on those. If you had a problem, just raise your hand and your teacher will help you figure out what you're doing wrong on those. Thanks for watching this lesson and participating in learning more about finding the slope given two coordinates on a, on a line. Um, I've enjoyed hanging out with you. I am Gary Lilly, Director of the Bristol, Tennessee City Schools. Thanks and have a great day.